ladies and gentlemen, let's just do what we did in our homework, and then I'll show you what I'm, asking, what I'm going to ask you to do for your homework tonight. Okay? So in your homework, I asked you guys to factor this, and that was it. I just wanted you to factor this. So a couple things to remember. First of all, if you guys remember, factoring trinomials produces a product of two binomials, correct? Now, when we know that our a is equal to 1, we figured out factoring. We knew the first two terms were multiplied were just going to be x, because x times x gave us x squared. But we have an issue here, because now these two do not need to multiply to give us x squared. They need to multiply to give us x to the fourth. So two class periods ago, we did a problem that was just like this. And what I told you to do is to replace your factors. Instead of using x, use x squared. But we still have to factor. We still need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give us 4 and then add to give us a negative 5. We still need to figure out those numbers. So we think about this and we say, OK, well, what two numbers multiply to give you 4, but then add to give you a negative 5? If they're adding to give you a negative 5, we know those two numbers have to be negative. So Kaylee, do you want to tell me what those two numbers may be? Negative 4, negative four and negative 1. So let's plug them in. Oops. And does that work? Can you guys apply FOIL to check your answers? Yeah. Yes, and it works. That's all you guys had to do for your homework last night. That's it. Just factor it. The only difference between factoring on this homework compared to pro homework you did in chapter 4 is now it's just raised to the fourth power instead of the second power. Now, a couple things we need to know about this. If it's raised to the fourth power, how many solutions are we going to have? Four. four. So we know when we're finding our solutions, we're going to have four solutions, right? When it was raised to the second power, how many solutions did we have? Two, right? And that's why we only had those two solutions. But when we do this, now what you're going to do for your homework tonight is apply the zero product property. x squared minus 1 equals 0. x squared minus 4 equals 0. Can we now solve for x? Yes. yes. Add 1, add 1. x squared equals 1. Add 4, add 4. x squared equals 4. Right? So now we can go ahead and solve. Square root, square root. x equals, remember, whenever you introduce the square root, the even root, you have to do plus or minus. So that's plus or minus 1. Square root, square root. x equals plus or minus 2. Do we have two solutions, or four solutions, I'm sorry? Yes, we do. Right? Are they all real? Yes, they are. So that means they all represent what on the graph? The x-intercepts. Right? Do will we have enough information to sketch a rough draft of what this graph would look like? Yeah, we could say, hey, these are all the zeros. Um, oh, and actually, you know what? Another student did ask me this. Do we know if the multi multiplicity is? Here's a great question a student asked me last class. Oh, well, the problem is, remember when we talked about multiplicity? Multiplicity only meant the powers of the linear factors. Here are the factors that we wrote. Are those factors linear? No. no. So if you guys go back to this. This is technically negative 1, x equals 1, x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. That's all the zeros written out, correct? In last night's homework in 5-2, or 5-2 homework, do you remember when I gave you the zeros and I said write the factors? Yes? So could I write the factors now of this? Yes. So the linear, what we call linear factorization, would look like this. That is the linear factorization of the problem. So you can see the multiplicities of all my factors. These are all linear. So now I can look at the multiplicity, which is all 1. So that means for every single x-intercept, they cross. It's just a big misconception. Students looked at a factored form, and they want to determine multiplicity. But that's an issue because these are not linear. It only looks at multiplicity when you have a linear factor. This is actually called the linear factorization. That might come up on some kind of test. So you want to make sure they're linear and they're factored, factorization. This is factored, but it's not factored over, um, over test, linear. It really depends on their questioning. But this would be what we call completely factored. You usually, when we're factoring something, we want to factor it completely or to its linear terms. But usually, they will expel how they want you to write it factored. Um, OK, well, that's it. And then the, you guys could also determine what the end behavior is that, which is rise left, rise right. So therefore, you'd have enough information to graph 